if A is a diagonal matrix, or if A is similar to a diagonal matrix, we know how to find the solution of a discrete dynamical system. But what happens if A is a C matrix? Well, in order to find the solution that the in the diagonal case, we only needed to compute powers of D. But we are also able to compute powers of C. So, we should be able to solve discrete dynamical systems when A is C. Let's have a look. Here we have our discrete dynamical system xk plus 1 equals A times xk. And now suppose A equals C, a scaling rotation matrix. So C is of the form scaling factor times rotation matrix. Then we know xk equals c to the power k times x0, but we are able to compute c to the power k because we have a rotation factor. We scale k times, so we get a r to the power k, and a rotation matrix. We rotate k times about an angle phi, so we get a rotation matrix with angle k phi. So cosine k phi on the diagonal and sines of diagonal times x naught. So here we have our solution. Well, just the formula doesn't tell us too much, so let's look at the phase space. Phase space gives us a graphical idea of how the solutions will look. And let us take an explicit example for that. We take the C matrix with A equals 0.9 on the diagonal and B equals 0.2 off diagonal and with an additional minus sign over there. Then we can compute the scaling factor r, r equals 0.85, and then the square root, check this. The exact value of r is not that important, it is just important that uh, the r is smaller than 1. That is what mainly matters. And then we can compute the phi using the triangle here, put the a and the b, and then the phi is the angle over there, so we can compute the phi, phi equals arctan 2 over 9, it's not a really nice number, but what is important that is that the angle phi is bigger than 0. That is mainly important if you want to sketch the, the phase space. So, how does the phase space look in this case? Put the first component on the x-axis, second component of xk on the y-axis, and suppose we start over here. So what will be our next point? Well, we scale by a factor r smaller than 1, which means that I get closer to the origin, and we rotate about a positive angle phi about the origin. So that means we rotate and we scale. So we go a bit counterclockwise and we get a bit closer to the origin for x1. The same for x2. We get a bit closer to the origin and we rotate a bit further, and then x3, x4, x5, etc., etc. We go on and we go on. And what we uh, see is that we spiral towards the origin. So a point like this is called a spiral point. And because we are going into the origin, a point like this is called a stable spiral point.